Welcome to the last of our five-part series on college preparation and applications. I am Dr. Jeffrey Weiner of Execututor. Now we'll imagine that the years of preparation are finished, the applications delivered, the acceptance letters have been received, and you're now in the second semester of your first year in college, art school, or a training institute. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Weiner, and we're going to answer a tricky question and one that I found most advisors, parents, and students have a hard time answering. Am I at the right place? I'm going to begin this time by uh, giving you a story of a student that I had while I was teaching at UC Davis, and he kind of attended class every once in a while. When he was there, he seemed to be pretty engaged, but he often disappeared. Um, he missed a lot of the assignments and then at the end of the term was uh, trying to um, get the work done, was unable to, and then um, ended up getting an incomplete. Next semester, he went home to work on the projects. We were going to work one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it didn't really work out that way. I didn't hear from him uh, again. It's turned out that he had asked me um, what what he thought he should do. He was just suffering from a lot of anxiety. Uh, he was not able to actually write. He would sit down to write and nothing would come. And he'd gone and talked to his advisor and they hadn't really been able to help him out, uh, et cetera. And, you know, and I, 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 I kind of stepped in in a way that I think a lot of people don't because most professors are, are going to be afraid to actually deal with some of the more emotional issues that students are confronted because of liability. They're afraid of that. So then they'll refer the person to somebody in mental health that might be able to help out. Those people really may not understand the whole academic process. Uh, so he was then uh, referred to a psychiatrist who thought he had issues with depression. He went home and was uh, working with a psychiatrist. Well, it really didn't deal with, I think, some of the fundamental issues, which was that it simply was not the right school for him. Um, that's not something that somebody who works at the university as faculty is going to be able to or is going to be willing to tell the student you're at the wrong place. Most people are going to consider that the issue is that you are not adjusting well. That's usually the case too with freshmen that people are going to say, you need to work on your time management skills. You need to get better study habits, et cetera. But they're, they're not going to be willing to really assess whether the school was a good match to begin with, in which in many cases it's not. If the student is having that many issues, a lot of times it's not a psychological or psychiatric issue, but it's simply that they're not at the right place. And then there's some really basic fundamental questions that you would need to ask yourself after your first semester. So you would give yourself the first semester as an adjustment period. You're getting used to being away from home if this is your first time away. You may be getting used to uh, the independence of not having these days structured where you're in school from eight to three and you know you're gonna go from one class to another, but now you have these big gaps between classes that you need to fill up in some way. You don't actually have to go to class. There's nobody there that's gonna call your parents up and tell them if you're not attending. So you have all these this independence that you need to get used to and then of course a different living situation. So I would say give yourself a semester for that kind of adjustment process. And then the second semester, if you're still finding that um, you're not happy, um, then, then it might be a more, it might be that uh, you did not actually go to the right place. So I'd say if you followed Execututor's protocol or if you've, if you've worked um, on, you know, years ago on figuring out what your career path is going to be or what your talents are um, and creating a good college list, you probably won't find yourself in this situation. But if you've been working with, um, if you haven't worked with a, with, with Execututor, if you work just with your school college counselor, you've been, you've allowed your um, friends and family to have too much input into where you go without thinking about what you want to do, you might find yourself at the wrong place. So these are the questions that you can ask yourself. And they're very basic again. Are you finding classes that you enjoy? So if every class you're attending, you're finding dull, 
may be that the, the learning situation is not the right, the learning context is not the right one. So remember we talked about large classes versus small classes or more individual attention from professors versus graduate students. Um, maybe that you, that, that say you're, you're at a large university uh, and uh, getting taught by graduate students and what you would really want is more of this individual, more tutorial uh, style. So if you're finding that you don't have classes that you enjoy, uh, it may be that the whole pedagogical system, that is the way these classes are set up, um, is not the right match for you. Another question to ask yourself is, are you making friends? Students that are uh, unhappy um, for academic reasons or find themselves in a part of the world that's not the best place for them, like a very, you find yourself in Minnesota, um, when you really want a sunny place uh, with good weather, um, or you find yourself in the country when what, what you really like is an urban situation, chances are that you're also going to find yourself isolating. Those two things go hand in hand. So are you making friends and are you making friends that are uh, from a variety that are di diverse? Uh, I find that students that are really at the right university have friends from all over the place, um, where students that are unhappy, they tend to isolate or to congregate only with people that are like them. So you'll find the international, say, Chinese students are only hanging out with other Chinese students because they haven't really adjusted to the university and they haven't really, that it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's not a place in which they're thriving. So they tend to isolate with people that are more like them. So I would say, if, are you making friends? that are diverse, that are from different backgrounds, that are from different parts of the world, chances are you are in the right place. And then the final final thing to ask yourself is, are you focused? And by this I mean, um, are, do you have a sense of what, um, you know, what the long-term plan is for what you want to study? Uh, in that first semester, or the second, first and second semester, you're going to be taking more general classes and they, um, you know, the 101 classes in different subjects and uh, that that should be kind of like a like a buffet experience where you're getting to taste different um, dishes that you're really focusing on um, the the academic experience rather than just kind of taking classes blindly. So the you know the the, the school that is the right university is going to have um, going to offer you some sort of support services also for choosing classes, and um, uh, are you uh, choosing? Are you getting involved in extracurricular activities that make you uh, that inspire you? And um, that's also part of being focused. So like let's say you were somebody who liked to sing um, in high school, and all of a sudden you find you are not doing any of that anymore. Um, because you're too busy, like gaining 15 pounds as an, <laughs> just, you know, partying all the time. Well, um, that kind of, you know, straying away from the things that you like really catches up with you. Uh, it, it, uh, eventually you won't be as happy. So staying focused on the things that matter to you, uh, is something that you can do when you're at the right school. So, um, I had a student who really enjoyed playing field hockey but she ended up um, going to a first division school where it would not be possible for her to be on a competitive team. She just wasn't good enough. Um, so it, it also, it just, she wasn't able to focus on the things that mattered because she was at this big university. Whereas in her case, it would have made more sense to go to a small school where she could have been on a competitive team. Um, and really, uh, I consider that also part of focus. You're focusing on the things that you like and that give you make make you uh, feel alive because when when all those different parts of you uh, making friends, participating in different activities, being in classes that you enjoy, that you're feeling you're getting something out of, um, when you're when you're happy from doing all that, chances you're going to do much better, and you're going to meet people who may take you down a certain career path. They may give you ideas. They, you know, somebody's father might be able to help you get an internship, et cetera, but you're plugged in and you're, um, uh, you're, 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 you're networked. There's a difference between somebody who wants to go play field hockey, something they're passionate about, you know, sacrificing that to, to go on to school versus somebody who wants to go out and party with their friends. You know, that, that's the sacrifice you're making to focus on school. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is, yeah, what, what really is the difference or what, how can a person 
weed that? How can a student weed that out? Okay, so what are the activities that are gonna that are gonna contribute um, to your contentment in order to focus on your studies? Doing generic extracurricular activities, that is to say, like that you're doing things outside of your academics, um, just doing a whole bunch of them is not gonna necessarily gonna make you more content. Like, yes, you can go to a lot of different activities and meet more people and be more socially plugged in because you're going to many things, but chances are that's also gonna tire you out. You really uh, are going to have to limit. It's it's very different than high school where you're a lot of times in high school, you really are doing a ton of things. Um, as you get older and as you go through the educational process, you really have to narrow the number of ex extracurricular activities that you do and really think about, you know, how much bang am I getting for my buck in terms of my time. <clears throat> if I'm going to choir practice, let's say, or field hockey practice, um, is that really energizing me or does it feel like just another thing to do? If it feels like just one other thing, one, it, it, then, then eliminate it. If you are in that situation where you realize maybe the school is not the perfect fit for you, what can a person do at that point? This is, this is a really complicated one too because most chances are your parents are not going to want you to transfer. There's a lot of resistance to it. Um, there's, they, they, it, 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 they ends up thinking that, that you've made, you've made your, it's your first failure or it's their first failure because you didn't choose the right place or, uh, it's a failure because it didn't work out. Um, so, um, part of it is going to be you having to have very serious and honest conversations with your parents. And you're going to want to prepare for that too, almost like uh, an interview for a job. You're going to want to come up with uh, alternatives, uh, schools that you've researched and that you, so you seem really mature about it, that you know, um, I want to transfer, you know, you're, 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 you're at a UC or something or Cal State and you're like, actually, I found this art school on the East Coast that I want to transfer to. And th this, these are the courses that they offer. And this is how we could finance it and really preparing yourself for it. Um, and that's going to give you the best shot. And don't mention this to your parents <laughs> until you've really done your homework because others are going to write it off as you being maladjusted or being immature. So I think that's really essential, um, you know, because chances are, because the reality is you're not going to be able to finance this on your own. Um, you're not considered independent uh, until you've been financially independent of your parents for, I think it's a year and a half or two years. So even if you found another school that you liked and you wanted to qualify, you wanted to go do it on your own, you couldn't because you are still considered a dependent of your parents. So if you're, if you're, if you're young and you're still, um, and you're not independent, then you're going to have to find ways of persuading of being persuasive, uh, with your parents and explaining, uh, why, why it would be beneficial for you to transfer to another place. Another thing that you, you know, you can, you can make it palatable to them or to persuade them is looking at the finances, comparing finances and showing why it's a better deal at the other place or, um, their, their job placement or placement to graduate school. So you're gonna have to really sell it. So this is the end of our five part series on college prep and the application process. And you can find the, uh, earlier podcasts on this, the answering the first four questions on the executor website. And uh, we'll continue in the future to ask and answer the most important questions about preparation and admissions. So feel free to schedule a um, initial consultation that's free of charge. Or if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you can fill out the contact form on the Execututor website at executor.com and fill out the contact form. And until next time.